Hello developers and welcome to PHP Developers TV, your home for everything you need to know to be a knowledgeable PHP developer. I'm your host, as always, Scott Keck Warren. In our previous two videos, we discussed what test-driven development is and why you should use it, and we also gave a very basic intro into PHP Unit. In this video, we'll work through how to use PHP Unit to develop some new features using test-driven development. A brief recap of test-driven development. Test-driven development consists of five phases that we'll be cycling through during the course of this video. They include quickly add a new test, run all tests and see the new one fail, make a little change, run all tests and see them all succeed, and then refactor to remove duplication. If these phases are a little fuzzy, make sure to check out our video What is Test-Driven Development for a full overview. Example, SuperString is empty is true. Let's say our application has a SuperString class to enhance PHP string type and we need to have some functionality to check to see if the string we have is empty. This is what the superstring class looks like initially. Quickly add a new test. The first thing we're going to do is create a new test to check the result of one input to superstring. Notice how small the test is. We're giving the test a very specific functionality to test, and we're only asserting one thing. If we have more than one assert per test, we run the risk of making it difficult to debug later when something does eventually break. Also note that we've named the test function so we can easily understand what the test is doing. Run all tests and see the new one fail. Now we'll run PHP unit to see that we do indeed get a failing test. In this case, we haven't yet defined the function, so we get an undefined method error. Make a little change. Our goal in this phase is to make the smallest change we can to allow our tests to pass. To that end, we're going to create a new isEmpty function and just have it return true. It doesn't cover all the possible inputs, but the goal in this step isn't to cover all the inputs, it's to get our test to pass. We'll cover more inputs later. Run all the tests and see them all succeed. Now we run our tests and verify that our test passes. Refactor to remove duplication. Our code currently doesn't contain any duplication, but it's important not to get lazy and skip this step. Example, superstring is empty is false. Our implementation of is empty is going to be wrong most of the time because of its current implementation. Now we need to add another test that checks for opposite cases where the string isn't blank. As a general rule, it's a good idea to have tests for what we would consider normal input and the extremes inputs, such as very large or very small values, and spots where we can think of oddities happening. Quickly add a new test. Here's our test. It's essentially the inverse of our test blank string causes is empty to return true function. Run all the tests and see the new one fail. Make a little change. Now we make a small change to our is empty function so it passes all of the tests. Run all the tests and see them all succeed. refactor to remove duplication. Again, due to the simple nature of our example, there isn't any duplication in our code at this point. Example, superstring is not empty. Now we have another feature that requires us to check to see if the string isn't empty. To that end, we're going to create an isNotEmpty function that will complement our isEmpty function. Quickly add a new test. Run all the tests and see the new one fail. Make a little change. 
In this case, instead of returning false and then creating another test so we can write the functionality by going through all of the test-driven development steps, we're just going to trust ourselves and create the obvious implementation of the isNotEmpty function. Run all the tests and see them all succeed. Refactor to remove duplication. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The last two times that we've hit this step, we haven't had anything to do, but now let's look at our isEmpty and isNotEmpty functions. We can see some minor duplication in the two calls to MB string length. Now we just need to determine how we want to resolve it. The first solution is to extract that duplication into a new function, because we'll most likely need that same logic again. The second solution is to realize that isNotEmpty returns the boolean opposite of isEmpty. In the end, the first solution gives us the best flexibility for future expansion. So we'll stick with that. Finally, we need to run our tests again to verify that no errors crept into our code as we made these changes. Thank you for watching our video. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment as it helps others find our videos and gives us a nice warm fuzzy feeling. Are you using PHP unit and test driven development? How's it going? Let us know in the comments if it's going great or if you're running into problems that we can help you solve. Until next time, this is Scott Keck Warren for PHP Developers TV.